no worries. We will have that chat again. So please stick around. As I say, the judges uh, had a real oh, tough with, with, with every. Well done, mate. Every uh, sort of area. What is a shock? And now it's time for Carpenter and Jordan of the Year. Episode 16, yeah. yeah. Yes, guys, episode 16. Today we're going to bring you a banger on this brand new extension in Castleford where we've had to do another raft like you saw in Street House. Um, we've had to do a raft, we've had to do a bit of drainage, we've had to do some pretty deep drainage. We've had to set some new drains out for a new uh, soil pipe. And we've come across a lot more problems than we did come across on Street House. But we're going to get right into it anyway. I'm going to explain it in more detail. I'm going to jump down this hole now and show you what I've been doing down there today. <laughs> Yeah. You're getting all the way in, yeah? All the way in. To this client's piss. So, today, before Ben arrived, I came to this big hole that the boys created yesterday because the manhole was fully blocked up. We got some guys out with the drain rod. He jet washed it, he jet washed it out. He got rid of the blockage, but then he stuck his camera down and he actually found that about 1,400 mil away from the manhole, there was a break in the pipe. He told us that it was 1400 running straight, which is why we started digging there for absolutely no reason. Because as Wilson discovered, it kind of tees out straight away on an angle from the manhole with a pretty steep fall into a main line which runs parallel with the manholes of the exact house. So it's a bit of a dodgy one. These houses were built about 100 years ago and eventually we saw some water trickling out right on the wire junction. So we found the problem. The solution we weren't so sure about, so I had to ring around a few ground worker mates that I've got, see what they'd have done, uh, make sure it were all okay with the client, that they were happy, that this is all kind of like additional works. It's problems that we've come across after we've started the job. We're a bit of an head scratcher, but we've done it, we've tested it a few times, it's all kosher, not a drop of water coming out of there. Got plenty of pictures for the building inspector, and we're now going to get it filled in with shingle, get it layered in stone, two, two, five layers, we've got to whack it down, whack it down, whack it down, get it back up to where we started. Get another 225 level with the rest of the raft and then we're back and we're cracking on and it's all going to be never ever seen again so no one except you guys is going to know what's actually gone into this foundation. <laughs> The drain pipe needs moving because if we were going to leave that drain pipe where it is, there would be a drain pipe in the middle of the brand new open plan kitchen because that's mm. what we're building. We're forming an extension. <laughs> we're forming an extension for these guys to extend the kitchen. So all that wall there is coming out once we do the knock through, which means that the down pipe needs moving to the outside. And then eventually when they do get the new kitchen, they'll have to turn the water off for a day, route it round and send it wherever they want to send it. Smells that. Oh, bro. It stinks. Does it? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> 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 nice. <laughs> nice, that, yeah. Um, uh, needed. Warm today, boy. Yeah, it is. What happens if oh. some of these bricks come out of the end? Are you bothered? Uh, enough people here to put them back in, Chief. Take them out if you need some. I don't want to take so many out, but mate. I fly and get that whacker. I don't care. Get it in boot. Oh, I ain't got my van either. That's a story for another day. <laughs> right, where is it going? Tell it now. Oh, it's in Weymouth. Yeah? Yeah. My van is in Weymouth. <laughs> How's that happen? Around here and get number of one. Yeah, so my van's in Weymouth, which is about 250 miles away from here. <laughs> the reason my van is in Weymouth is because I went to Weymouth about three weeks ago, two weeks ago, two weekends ago, in my van, went for a night out. Uh, visited various different places, uh, drank various different um, things and ended up losing my key. Yeah. So my key is somewhere in Weymouth and my van is at a Ford garage in Weymouth. How did you get home train? No. Courtney came and got me. Sure. Courtney came and got me in the Mumbus. It's like a six hour drive or something, man. Five and a half. I'm not going to lie, I even said to her like, it would have took a lot for me to do that for her. 
Here Bad deal. Hey, up, Silky's back. Hey, Zroom. Hey. Got it, Mish? Yep. Okay, now. <laughs> all right. good. What? Where's that just come from? It's all good. My house, we had it left over from the street house there. extension. When we were on the street house extension, I mentioned something about saving all the shingle that we dug out. The developers that built these houses, for some reason, used about 100 tonne of shingle as a sub base for the flags. So, we're just checking this out. We've salvaged three and a half, three and a half ton. We managed to save three and a half ton, but we're running out of space on a drive now. Whoever built the houses had just dropped loads of shingle. Uh, it must have been like the last house that they built and they had some leftover gear, so they dropped a load of shingle in the patio area. We salvaged it as we were digging out the uh, raft foundation. Took it all to my house, and now this is the job where it's come in handy. So we've reused the shingle that we had on this extension to cover up the new drainage that we've installed. How much that save you on that shingle? That's probably, uh, I don't know. I've 20 quid? No, no. Been more. more than that. We salvaged about three ton. Right. Uh, and we've probably used the equivalent of about a ton and a half in this job. So tell me, you tell me in the comments what I've saved because I've no idea. I've never bought shingle before in my life. But found some, saved some, reused some. Oh, boy. All for the environment, even though Silky's done about 10 shuttle runs in a diesel van to go get it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. It looks nice. What's that like you want to eat? It? Look like golden nuggets. Golden nuggets. Get a bit of milk. Look like golden nuggets. Cereal. Oh, looks like it looks like it's off fishing. You need to buy him that. Star it show on today's episode, mate. I know, yeah. So we turned up here on day one, started to dig the strip foundation. We hit good clay almost instantly, which we were like, fucking get in. And then the inspector came out once we had it half dug, um, just to have a look that we've got the right ground type, which we was fully happy with. Um, that we'd gone to the right depth, he was fully happy with. We'd missed all the services, he was fully happy with. And then he spotted that. Bloody conifer. Bloody carnivore. <laughs> <laughs> that little bush there, it's got there's nothing to it at all, but for some reason the building inspector, and we have to agree with him, and we have to go with what he says, because at the end of the day, he's the one that signs off the build to say, yep, it's safe, it's cushy, uh, it's all done to the regs. So he spotted that tree, and because that tree was within two meters of a dig, and because it was a certain type of tree, um, it's gonna suck too much moisture out of the clay, because this clay is something some shrinkability level um, that wasn't suitable to be within such a distance from that tree. So we had to go back to the structural engineer and find an alternative solution to a strip foundation. So that took another week um, to get that all, first of all, drawn up, get him out here, get it approved, get the clay tested, get everything else sorted out so that his calculation was all kosher for us to be able to carry on with the extension. Like the, there was a point where we even said to the client, this is going to cost you X amount more pounds, um, and they actually uh, were very upset when they heard about that. So we were very close to pulling the plug. Luckily, we managed to come to an agreement and been able to push forward with a raft foundation. As you know, we know all about raft foundations. So it's literally a replica. So we had to fill in what we'd already dug, compact it into two five layers, mirroring what we did in street house, um, and then get another two two five of hardcore. As part of the raft foundation, we're going to put 30 mil of sand blind in, uh, visqueen, sheet of mesh on 50 mil castles, sheet of mesh, concrete. We'll leave 100 mil gap between the, the two sheets of mesh, so we'll put another sheet of mesh after 100 mil of concrete's gone in, and then another 50 mil of clearance of concrete above the second sheet of mesh. And that will be our slab, that will be our foundation, and then once that's done, once all this is filled in, once we're out of all the ground, all the drainage and all the services and all that shit that I now feel like I'm an expert in because we've had such a bad run of luck, we'll be able to lay some bricks. Oh, I'll be glad to see that day.
Client providing the guilt. Pretty much done here for the day now. We've got all the stone back in, we've got the drainage all back filled, we've got that all filled in. We're back to where we started, and tomorrow we can start prepping the raft. JDN Brickwork, this is my keepy uppy challenge. Way up, this is a bit random, isn't it? Me doing kick ups at the Unilite headquarters where the Trade Legends podcast is hosted. I had the pleasure of being invited to do the podcast to take part part of the podcast is a little kick-up competition i actually set a record but it's nothing on the record you're about to see by john farnworth so here we are we're going to jump into that now and then the next episode you will see a continuation of the extension which started off this episode we're doing something a little bit different today we are spending a day with on the tools you heard on the chimney episode that i do bits of on the tools every now and again and today is another one of them days where we're doing something that is totally different where we're going to be setting a world record with Jordan Farnworth John Fuck John Farnworth He's right John here as well right. On course to set a world record with Mr John Farnworth Is that the right one? Yeah Mr John Farnworth who is a professional football freestylist He's going to be getting as many footballs as he can into a cement mixer in under a minute. Stick with us, this is going to be a belter. See ya! Because it's never going to stay in at that. Oh, because you're doing it so far away. It's at that angle. Oh. oh, look, we've got to cuddle, John. Look. If we get it, it will work. Oh, there we go. How did that hurt my shoulder? That's a sign of old age when kick up to your shoulder. that are not official? Yeah, yeah, uh, it's, it's whenever you say this is an official attempt. Okay. At that point, that's your first attempt. Awesome. Is that straight enough for you? It feels straight from where I am. Yeah? Um, yeah. We're really on, maybe. We're still need another video. Exactly, yeah. 
So we need this piece. Another piece of. Yeah, these aren't doing much anyway. Seven point three, seven point four, seven point five. Seven point five. Seven point five. Seven point five. It's very technical. Today we're attempting to set a record for the most balls kicked into a cement mixer in one minute. Are you ready, John? Yeah. Yes. Three, two, one. Ready, John Boy? I am ready. Are we all ready for another go? Today we're attempting a Guinness World Records title for the most balls kicked into a cement mixer in one minute. Are you ready, John? Yeah. Yes, come on. Three, two, one. Mate, that three in a row would be with. Boom, 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 boom. Today we're attempting a record for the most balls kicked into a cement mixer in one minute. Are you ready, John? Yeah. Yes, come on. Three, two, one. Oh! Come on, Johnny boy. Come on, John. We've got faith in you, John. We're all behind you, buddy. Really. Keep going, John! Yes, oh, yes, 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 yes! Oh, John. Yes, yes, yes! Yes, ball on! John! Yes! 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 John, how do you feel? Amazing. Amazing. We've got a new record. We've got a new record. We've got five balls in the mixer. If you think you can beat it, drop us a comment below. We want to see you have a go. See you next time. Bit of a different episode there for you guys, wasn't it? But uh, we've had a fun day today filming with John. Uh, it's semi related to bricklaying because he was pinging balls into a cement mixer. We've met a new mate in John. Uh, we're going to keep in touch, maybe bring some more content for you between ourselves personally. And uh, big thanks again to On The Tools for letting us film some behind the scenes stuff. Uh, we had a really good day. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Drop us a like, drop us a comment, subscribe. Tell a mate to subscribe and uh, help this channel to grow. We will see you in the next episode.